Shared Screens Media Club, which is your one-stop shop for reviews on movies, video games, TV shows, but never books. Fuck those guys. Today, we are discussing Moon Knight Episode 3, The Friendly Type. Joining me today is Austin J. Ernst. That's me. Hi. Hello. We've also got the porn stash who's ready to smash. It's Brett Jamerson. <laughs> oh my god, that was so good. <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's up? Look at that. Look at that beauty. The word porn came out of your mouth, and I was so afraid about who you were about to introduce. Don't get me wrong. Because I was wasn't terrible. sure if it was going to be me or Brett. Oh, no. Don't get me wrong. That was terrible, but the way you presented it, 100%. 100%. Thank you. 10 out of 10. Oh, it, worked. it worked. It rocked. Right. The person afraid of good. being introduced with porn is Lear and Jazz. <laughs> okay, that one gets like a solid 3 out of 10. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ. Here we go. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. So, what did we think of this week's episode so far, guys? We're officially at the halfway point. Only three more to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Oscar Isaac is carrying this show. <laughs> carrying this show. The show does nothing for me. Really? I'm bored already. If I didn't have to watch this for content, I think I'd be done. I feel like the last few minutes of this episode felt slow for me until, like, the very peak end where they're... Um, banishing him or imprisoning him but there was a part towards like after all the stuff that happens at that dude's house but before he starts rearranging the constellations or i kind of fell off for like a second yeah the the whole moving the stars thing that was a weird that was a weird thing i, thought I don't know cool. if i enjoyed that it was visually cool i just know i don't know what that means for the earth <laughs> like what's actually happening is it just imagery what, are we spinning super fast? Like, I don't understand what's happening. Well, yeah, because that's where you get into, like... People, when Egyptian gods were created, didn't understand that there was another half of the Earth going on. Sure. And so, that was something they really thought, like, moon gods could do, was move the stars and move the Earth. But, like, the logic of that now makes less sense. Yeah, and I, like, if you move a moon that suddenly, a bunch of people just drown somewhere across the globe. <laughs> totally. I just, I don't know how, they probably will find a way, because Marvel always does this, but they have to approach that to some extent, right? They have to say something about that. They can't just let that go, right? I mean, he's a pigeon-skulled man with a big staff that empowers a human that he brought back from the dead to be basically indestructible. But, I really but, wouldn't be surprised if it never gets addressed I think the again. easiest way to explain but, it is that it's, it's just imagery. But, Although, if you ask me, the stars were imagery and the okay. eclipse was real. And if, and if that is the case, if they if they lean into that, do we get that line, though? That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Do we get a line that addresses that, do you think? Nah. Because I need one. <laughs> that's the problem. I need it. <laughs> I don't know. I also don't understand Star Drift. So I don't know how big of what a now? deal. That's oh, why they oh, had over to move time, it. Over time, over time, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't realize. Like, I was still catching up that that's a thing. Um, the the moving the sky had already passed by the time I was catching up that like the, the <laughs> stars move. Um, so that was. I just. I I have a lot of. I feel like a math equation could have been used for this. Like I'm just saying. Like I feel like on the internet. Kansu, I know that his whole thing, his whole shtick is that he's dramatic. And, like, this is the thing that happens in the comics, too, where he'll do something and it's like, is that really the way you had to do that? Or is it just that you can and you're dramatic? The reason why I don't think there would be one exact math formula is because of your position on the Earth would also mess with that, as would the time of year, day, all that. But couldn't so you do the calculation from your position on Earth? Because if we have star charts going back... I assume, and have like, references to how the constellations looked then versus now. See, I think it could have been an app. That's where I'm at. I feel like there's some <laughs> sort of, like, astronomer app, you know? I don't know if that exists. I'm sure somebody could make it, but I don't yeah. know if it exists now. I that, would been, um, that would have been great if if Stephen was like, ooh, I know an app. <laughs> ooh, <laughs> hey. Hold on, we have um, to watch an ad for this mobile game. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that would have been funny. That actually would have been kind of good. I'm, I'm with you, Jordan. Yeah. What about you, Brett? Any regular thoughts on the episode? Um, yeah, I thought uh, Oscar Isaac is doing a great job. Uh, as I've said every other episode, same with uh, Ethan Hawke. Um, yeah, I think those two are really making the show what it is. I think, not that like 
to 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 go off of Austin's point of like he wouldn't be watching this if it wasn't for like doing this podcast. Like, I mean, the story on its own is is, is fine. It's fun. It's cool. Um, I think the beauty of the MCU is once we get like a connection to something else beyond the Moon Knight part of the universe. So, mm-hmm. um, maybe that will do something for you, Austin. I, I don't know, but um, hope so. But yeah, I, I I like it. I, I I thought the the banter between Stephen and Mark in this episode was fantastic. I loved the the hint to Jake. I thought it was really really yeah. cool. Is that um, where they're hinting at? Because I don't know the personas, but the yeah. the yeah. third that like really brutal one is Jake. His, apparently, his third alter is most likely going to be Jake. Come yeah. On, is it- Sorry to all the Jakes out there, but that's a generic name. Like <laughs> it could have been anything else. I mean, yeah, <laughs> even and Steven. Steven and Mark are generic. It's too. it's yeah, <laughs> it's across the board pretty pretty generic. Even Grant is like a fairly generic last name. Specter's a cool last name. So, like if you walk into a frat <laughs> and just yell the name Mark, <laughs> sure. Steven, or Jake, the chances of someone yelling back more than one. Very, the chances yeah. of more than one person. Yeah, <laughs> every frat oh, yeah. house but, has Moon Knight's three personalities and the Robins like, <laughs> on first names. Like, I love that. That's really good. <laughs> Yeah, Jordan's thought, on fire right now. But, I, I thought but, the action too was great in this episode. More I disagree. So I was so bored. I was so bored with that it. first yeah. knife fight on the top of the roof. I really liked because I, it was interesting. Of like you know, usually it's like oh, you add a knife or a gun into a fight, and there's like that whole element. But now you've added multiple knives with multiple people. Yeah. Multiple knives is much more scary than I than I thought it would be because he was fighting one guy and had him against the wall and I was like okay cool but there are two other guys behind you who also have large have knives not, yeah and, and if the, you turn your back on this guy with a large knife there's nothing to stop him from stabbing you yeah and that's the thing is they're just knives it's not like fucking Harry Potter wizards were like you have to use yours like fucking you could pick up any just knife anyone can pick up a knife and stab a, you and like die I have a few things about that one I think I've been spoiled I think I've been desensitized to like marvel action scenes these this just did nothing to me to uh, a question if he got stabbed but he wasn't in the suit would it actually stab him because he gets impaled by poles and then he's in the car two seconds later and he's like, taken off his shirt and shit so i'm, no I'm just i don't know knows. i'm That's just curious a great question so it's like the mystery of moon knight i understand the purpose of the scene show like this mark specter dude he, he means business i get that but like couldn't he just like let himself get stabbed then like do a jab to the dude's throat and be done with Here's it. Here's the thing. I if think... you don't know if you can do that, that's not the time to test it. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I just I found say, out there later, though, I guess. but ju- Just, you know, based off of, you know, comic <clears throat> book and sci-fi stuff, it's either he doesn't get protected and he dies, and and then from that and he then... either gets resurrected again yeah. and it's normal, or he gets resurrected again, but he's, like, you know, less of himself, like, you know, like his soul doesn't come back. All the, I don't know. But, like... I, I don't think it's like gonna protect. Like that's why he has to have the suit on. That's why they make yeah. a big deal about summoning the suit. Brett's pretty much on it, where it's like in in his canon, hmm. they don't know what would happen if Mark got stabbed without the suit on. Kansu might save him. Kansu might not save him. There have been times when Kansu has let him get stabbed in the suit, because why not? And, like, had it hurt him? So it really, like, that's a pro- like, his main issue is how well his powers work are all tied to Kansu. And so, mm, like... Okay. And not, like, an energy thing, but just his mood. Yeah, like, Kansu could truly just decide one day he doesn't like Mark anymore, more, and Mark would just die. Like, he would just drop dead. Um, because that's- I had a note where, um... I did- I did enjoy the, like, when they- when they first shot at both of them, and he was, like, shielding late La- La- Layla. 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 Yeah, I remembered a cool. name! Guys, I remembered a name! Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then- then he, like, fires him back at him. Like, and that was, like, the beginning of the fight, and I was like, here we go, that this is gonna be dope, scene, and like, that was, like, the awesome. only thing I didn't- That's, I that's what I was saying. It looks so think... bad! Like, I, I don't think he- I don't know. There was I one- I think it really... better than most Marvel content. It, it there felt was so one off to really me. weird cut, but everything else I felt looked good. I thought it was fucking awesome when Layla's necklace came apart, and she just yeah. used him to stab that dude. I think that was and... cooler than the entire Moon Knight fight, and that, that's, like, underwhelming for me. Like, that makes me- it makes me upset, And I don't know. when he jumped, and the cape went into a moon- Christ. He does his moon. His that moon was thing. Cool. moon cake. I missed that. That's why I, I was bad, guys. Dumb. I missed it. 
Uh, this is a me thing, but I enjoyed that they had a conversation while they were standing there with the cape around them because Batman yeah. does that literally all the time. And he just stands there. And I feel like that's so awkward being huddled under like somebody's cape and you're you have to have your head down and just we're not talking about how weird this is. I like that like they fought very well together. Mm -hmm. hey. um, <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> You're just under the cape, and he's draped over you, and you're like, what's up? Yeah, like, Come what here do you think you do? That's, yeah, like, this is, we I just totally. have to stand like this now. The, the yeah. last thing I'll say about about the action, because this show is genu genuinely just boring me. Like, it was something that I thought would really, like, appeal to me with, like, the multiple personalities and that kind of stuff, but, and I do enjoy that banter, but I don't think I'm getting enough of it, and I think I enjoyed Steven at the helm more than I'm enjoying Mark, and maybe that's just the juxtaposition of the first couple like episodes. Steven? Because I, I think this Steven is better than, from what I've heard I, of Steven in the comic, I think this Steven is more interesting. Anyway, what I'm getting to is that I think the, the first episode didn't do it for me personally, and that was like ramping up and all these cool, mysterious things are happening. And since that didn't do it for me, the action kind of needed to it needed to work for me, and that's also not working just for me personally. So I, I don't know, like the two points of interest for, for me going into it just didn't work for me. So I think the show as a whole for me is just failing. I, yeah. I thought... One last touch on the action. I, I thought that little sh moon shuriken throw was dope. Like when he th kind of threw it before even turning around. I thought that was cool. But um, uh, the, dude on the, yeah, the dude on the horse? Yeah. Uh, the uh, I can't remember the real actor's name, but he passed away. Yeah, rest in peace. Ago. Um, which, yeah, that's obviously very sad. Oh. That was the guy, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I remember that happening and me being like, I have no Miller idea. Miller or something. Is. He's a French actor. Um, yeah, he died at like a skiing trip or something like that. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I remember this now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. And um, Too bad. I I, th I thought the episode was uh, kind of funny, especially when Mark summoned or Steven summoned the suit, and then he was like, he noped right out of there immediately. Like, I I'm liking the increased dynamic between. That was funny, person. and I think that's why I like Steven more because I think yeah. it, it's the comical angle because the action isn't doing it for me like that. I'm leaning more into enjoying the comedy aspect of it, and I think yeah. that's maybe that's why it's appealing to me. I don't have good answers, but maybe that's why it's grabbing my interest the, more. The, the, incre the increased dynamic between the virgins of um, Mark and Steven. Um, <laughs> I thought you also, said virgins. <laughs> uh, also, like... Steven's uh, probably a virgin. Uh, yeah, utilizing, absolutely. like... <laughs> utilizing um, Steven's, like, skill set in terms of ciphering the the map the constellation map and stuff i thought that was cool but so that he's not just this character who's like crying all i did the time and like yeah i did dead. enjoy how they they utilized him that, that his way. personality I, I that. actually has a point other than just being mm -hmm. a deterrence to mark that was smart right. i enjoyed that i also liked well i like how i think you're, they're getting closer to learning how to work together but like mm -hmm. when steven's like i'm not gonna help you if you're imprisoning me and i feel like both of them at some points need to understand that like hey this is just a bad time to switch personalities because these guys are already suspicious of us and we're trying to put on an act. Okay, so, again, I would like to point out that Mark understands that Steven is the one who is not getting on board. Okay, what <laughs> I'm saying is I feel like there needs to be a mutual discussion of like sometimes even the reverse where it's like Mark has to be like, I'm not turning in. I'm not taking control now because they've already met this side and we have to keep a cover we can't just suddenly. Yeah, but Steven can't fight to save his fucking life. So Mark no, no, but really I mean like if it's, a, if it's in a if it's in a undercover or like a thing where you're not fighting but you need to maintain your cool i don't think switching personalities is yeah but he uh, also doesn't i have... don't okay also i'm gonna throw this in here really quick um alters when it's did it's alters hmm. um oh. we i should have been more on that in the first episode too but it is alters somebody pointed it out to me today on twitter my it's... bad yeah <laughs> no it's not your fault i, I, I forgot that too. Up earlier it's, alters yeah. like the different personalities instead of personality yeah you say it's alters, alters is uh, what they refer to it okay gotcha by the way fuck arthur harrow fuck arthur harrow bro he like fuck that guy i'm kind of i'm kind of rooting for him a little bit like what brett what is uh, with you <laughs> okay <laughs> bro like, i was he, about to say i really like into Ethan Hawke's performance but i don't like arthur harrow I, I, I'm joking a little bit, but, like, he just walked into that pyramid, and clearly, since he was an avatar of Khonshu before, he probably is familiar with the other avatars a little bit. <laughs> he walked in, he's like, so... And he just <laughs> nice stunted. Oh, he just stunted on Khonshu and, and Mark, man. Yeah, that Incredible. trial was cool. Incredible. Especially, I think it was interesting meeting the other avatars. Mm-hmm. Again, not the full like nine. That... Not the full nine. It was only, like, five of them. I like that uh, Osiris is just, like, a white business guy. 
one of the biggest gods in Egyptian mythology, and he's just like a dude. He spends like, his days on Wall Street. Yeah, yeah like it I just did. looks like a guy that like my dad works with, and I get that yeah. that's the point, but like it's funny to me. I did enjoy that meeting. Like I thought that was a that was a cool scene. Um, yeah. I, I don't think it like blew me away or anything, but I, I that was enjoyable to see all of them gathered like that. That was cool. Yeah. I am gonna bring up something I brought up to Jordan, which is uh I love that they are sticking with Kansu being a dickhead. It's like I had said to Jordan last week that Kansu is basically like if this the blue beetle scarab was not only an asshole but unhelpful. And, like, I like that they're leaning. I was afraid that they were going to make it more like the Scarab, where, like, he's a dick and he has his weird way of doing things. But, like, he jumps real fast, real far. Yeah, but, like, far, it's fast, a sorry. symbiotic relationship yeah. with him and, and uh, Jaime. And um, he's helpful in, like, saving Jaime a few times. Yeah. Uh, like, he's concerned for his safety. Where Kansu is just like, fuck you, I don't care. And, like, I love it. He's a monster, and it's great. Like, he's a ter- he looks so cool, he's terrible, and I'm obsessed with him. His it. voice is reminding me of, like, a narrator from, like, a humorous video game, but I can't put my finger on it. There is a 99% chance that it actually is the voice actor from a humorous video game. The actor who voices Kansu is an incredibly famous actor who has done a ton of work whose name I do not remember off the top of my head. I gotcha, I'll look it up later. Isn't it the same person who did uh, Optimus Prime, or is that not the same guy? I've never who, seen the Transformers I don't know who movies. did Optimus Prime, to be I don't honest. remember his name. <laughs> um... Yeah. But no, like I, I'm enjoying Ethan Hawke's performance as Arthur Harrow, but I don't like Arthur Harrow. But I'm, I'm really digging his performance, especially when like he just like, I don't know, guy's smooth. Like with the with the gods, it's like okay, well they've they trust him because I guess they've dealt with him before, and there's that sense of familiarity. But when he like walked up and was talking to the, um, I don't remember the dude's name, but the one we were talking about before, Mogart. Yeah, and he was like, we all, all four of us have more in common than we think, but then just started shit. I think, uh, I think, uh, the, uh, the, that council, you know, I think it was, uh, a little dirty. I think some, either Osiris or somebody is, like, on Harrow's side. Well, yeah. well, yeah, have... we see Osiris at the end is very much on, on Arthur's side. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a mix of they're all some of them might be on arthur's side but there's also all of them have a preconceived notion already about kanju because he's been banished and like yeah but the the hot chick says that like she doesn't know who to trust because there are a bunch of people on the panel who want amit released yeah. yeah i'm just saying in general i think that also working against him is the fact that kanju has the like history there he's a bitch why also, do they this want to is resurrect a... Amit again. Sorry, I just don't remember the the purpose. Because Amit kills people before they do bad things, where Kansu punishes people who have already done bad things, and oh, he so gets it. They're trying to replace Kansu. No, they just don't think that Kansu is effective because Kansu still lets bad things happen. Like this is a a bad comparison, but it's the only one I can come up with. The Holocaust. Kansu. <laughs> His job is that, like, when all the Nazis died, and, like, when Hitler swallowed a bullet, like, Kansu then took his spirit and is tormenting him somewhere. Amit would have sucked the life out of baby Hitler before any of it had happened. Mm. Okay. Um, and the problem with Amit is that it doesn't... Amit doesn't bring free will into it. So, like, say there was a point in Jordan's life where his choices were murdering someone or not murdering someone. If there was even a universe where he would consider murdering that person, Amit would eliminate him. Because he's going to do the bad thing. So it's need like... What's up? Amit, Amit basically believes that humans are all evil to begin with, where Kansun is kind of well, like... He himself does not believe that people are good, but his version of justice believes that the baseline is, is good. Is it as simple as looking at, like, the idea of a thought crime, or is it yes. like a... I guess, because in, in the MCU they have the sacred timeline, like, we know for a fact you're going to, because we've all had thoughts about hurting someone, I'm sure. Yes, to but with Ame, it's, if you've even... It's like, thought crimes is very much, like, their thing. Gotcha. And um, 
Learen and Austin, I, I know you guys weren't on last week. Or Austin, were you on last week? I was not. No, okay. I didn't have a yeah. voice. I made the comparison that um um this the kind of argument with Ahmed is very similar to the um whole crux of the of the second Marvel Civil War, which was like in twenty sixteen, where there's like this inhuman that can kind of do what Ahmed does and like see the future. And, like, when people mm-hmm. are going to do bad things and half the heroes are like, we should use him and just get these people now. And the other half are like, that seems wrong, even if it is, like, an actual supervillain he has these premonitions about. Yeah, comics love that debate. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ethan Hawke just sucks. Not Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke is fine. Arthur Harrow just sucks. When he's in there and, like, he's just actively taunting and, like, using fucked up 80s di- like terms for, and just making mark feel like shit I'm like you're not a bad well. person yeah that he's not well that he's ill that he doesn't know his real name like it was literally like somebody and i'm not saying that this is a bad thing but like one of the writers googled toxic trait toxic sentences or like untrue sentences about did um and like just took the top nine comments <laughs> it was a very and um... like i get that that was the point it's yeah, just yeah. like fuck you <laughs> fuck you like I don't. Can't you should punch you in the fucking face? Knock it off, you dumb bitch. Whoa. <laughs> my neighbor. Oh, that was your cat. No, oh. that's my neighbor. I can hear it, so yeah. They're getting evicted for trashing the place. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> um, Serves them right. This is. Don't ask. Like, I don't know how I got here. I mean, I know how I got here, but it's going to seem weird. I also found that, like, the way that. Um, Arthur Harrow's like arguments were like very exaggerated in a way. The chase scene when he like is in the taxi and sees the guys that he was fighting before was the most cartoonish chase scene I've ever seen in live action. With like the pushing of the vendors and like all that stuff. Like I feel like you see that. You don't watch enough action movies. No, but I feel like you see that once or twice in an action movie. This one was getting it like to the point that. Have you ever seen a James Bond film? No. (laughs) That's 99% of the movie is a fucking James Bond being chased by a bad guy through a market in a different country. I don't even remember this. Again, I know I've seen the trope before, but I feel like in live action you don't get as much as the like throwing people stuff to the side. Oh no, absolutely. I could probably pull up a compilation of 8,000 different movies, including other Marvel movies that do it. Mm. Like, it's a very basic we have to chase because, I mean, I get that it is, like, the natural way that humans would think you would throw stuff to, like, put barriers between you and the person. He pulled down that rug and, like, (laughs) yeah, Mark Mark just had to step over it. It's not even the first time we've seen it in Moon Knight. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. we, like, it's just, that's just what, I'm not saying it's good or bad. That's just what writers put in for chase scenes like that. Because you can't have just their running. They have to do something, too. Yeah. Or, like, it looks dumb. That's not... Yeah. I... Here's the thing. I think the action in this move, this show was good just because you knew what was happening during it. Like, I knew who was getting hit, who was being taken out, who was going after who. And there weren't 8,000 jump cuts like Marvel during, like peak mc like civil war was where like it was eight thousand jump cuts in a fight and you had no idea who was on who who was fighting who like there's a reason people didn't know that like when backdrop came back and all that kind of stuff is because i don't fucking know they're all faceless however the guy licking the knife right before he went in <laughs> to stab oscar isaac made me want to kill myself that was also cartoony it was awful. It was awful. Really? That, was hate... de- that was definitely deliberate. I actually liked that yeah, moment because I it was funny. It. it was funny to me because he licked the knife and then he's like, <laughs> and he just jabbed him. He took that moment to just hit him. So I liked it. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of the Indiana Jones scene where he's flipping his sword like around. Either. <laughs> I don't, we don't need shot, to like... lick our weapons. <laughs> like, <laughs> we don't need to lick. There's a there's like a gangster movie where like a guy makes a girl like lick his gun, and that also freaks me out. Like, like stop that. licking no, weapons. Listen, lick your own fucking weapon, but I don't get something <laughs> for you. I just don't like it. Really freaks me. I don't like. I have no like idea where this is from, like but that. I saw like a, a picture a few years ago of some guy doing that thing where he's like, "This knife is covered in the most deadly poison," and does the thing where he licks the knife. He goes, "Oh shit!" and he just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, have no um, idea. I just feel like a good chunk of this episode could have been set to um the opening song from aladdin one jump ahead one yeah. stop yeah yeah that would have been funny 
Um, yeah, this, this, show this is, is a stupid me, fun so fact. I don't, I don't know. It's not doing it for me. Sorry, go on. This is a stupid fun fact, but this the desert they shot this in is the same desert in Jordan where they shot Dune and uh, Star Wars 9. So Oscar Isaac just lives there now. Like, <laughs> I think he just us. lives there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, it, it's like the same. He was saying in an interview that it's like the same area, like, of the desert that they're shooting in is the same. So he was like, it's just kind of like. It's probably a section that's secluded enough that you don't get the city in the background but also close enough that like if something were to happen you're not 10 miles 10 million miles away from like a hospital mm-hmm. yeah it's like in that um, sweet spot. there there's just one shot where you're like oh no this is absolutely where they shot star wars they shot a shot in star wars from this same angle of the same landscape <laughs> and that's no one's fault like you can't change the landscape but like it was just very funny to me yeah um was it when the uh, Knights of Ren were standing on a rock and the camera panned around? No, it's at uh, Space Coachella. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That whole area is where they shot Space Coachella. Is that a thing? And Star I don't Wars, know what yeah. that festival was called in... <laughs> You've never it seen was... a Star Wars movie, have you, Austin? Wait, am I fucking... Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that festival was like a, a lame like Easter egg nod to the original Star Wars movie. Because it was like, yeah, they do it every would... 42 years or something. See, you say it was I like miss the name Coachella. I feel it was more like Mardi Gras because she got beads. Yeah. They just like you handed get... her beads. Honestly, if I had to pick, it's I think it's like a Burning Man Coachella baby. Yeah, Burning uh, Man because it's like in the somebody middle of the rolled up in like an. Yeah, and like somebody rolled up with like a giant elephant like thing that they were riding in, like the way that people build those weird fucking sculptures at Burning Man. Mm-hmm. Um. Ah, oh, Rise of Skywalker sucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, Something I did want to talk about is they name-dropped Madripoor in this episode. Yeah. Which I think has been the only, if, the only major, if not just the actual only reference to the larger Mar- Marvel Universe we've had so far. And also makes you wonder, what the fuck were you two doing in Madripoor? What's the story I there? Mean, I mean, I, I can make some assumptions i assume it has to do with selling shit on the black market but still it f- feels like there's something or substantial the shang chi fight that was in in madripoor right that was in like hong yeah. kong or something that sounds right yeah 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 i just you know i feel like with what they kept dropping that layla is an arms dealer or not an arms dealer a uh, black market arts dealer I have a feeling we can guess what she was doing in Madripoor and who or, she may have been interacting oh, with. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. Well, is it arts or artifacts that she's dealing? Artifacts. She, right? Yes. And Yes, yeah, so she does artifacts because she's a baby archaeologist, but I would argue that the crowd that buys sarcophagi is also the crowd that would buy, like, an original Van Gogh. I mean, I don't know. Stolen from the There's a difference between having an original Van Gogh in your house and an actual person's body in your house. Oh well, they don't. They don't always buy the body. Sometimes the bodies get dumped. Doesn't that it's true. The they don't know where they. What? Doesn't that defeat the purpose? Well, because they don't want the body. They just want the sarcophagus. Hmm. Like some people want the body, but other people don't. And like other people put dummies in bodies get stolen. We're missing a ton of bodies from ancient Egypt that have been dug up by <laughs> the British that to this day, we still don't know where they I are. I feel like that's a where really easy like... way to hide a body. Is just be the type of person that decorates your house with sarcophagi and then dump the mummies and put your people in there. Okay, but here's the thing. I think if you're the type of person who displays sarcophagi in your Can home, we you're the type of person that you... sarcophagi? <laughs> this is so weird. Sarcophaguses? <laughs> you're, I think you... But if you're the person who has that, you're the kind of person who can pay someone to get rid of a body. Yeah, but that takes the fun out of it. <laughs> For who? I don't know. There's some sickos out there. Um, when he when they were doing the scene with the folding the papers into the shapes and all that kind of crap, mm-hmm. um, and he ripped the mirror off of the the car. I was like, that's a gross overreaction to something like this is annoying that you don't know what this means, but it's not. Destroy the car we're driving in, mm-hmm. and then he walks over and starts talking to Steve, and I was like. I get it now. <laughs> oh, I knew of it immediately, but I, I, even even with saying that, I still think it was a bit much. <laughs> could have just st- st- stood there and did it. You, you didn't have to rip found it off. A reflection in anything else? I mean, I guess you could argue standing behind the car 
out the mirror, there may not have been enough light to really see what you were doing. But you think ripping... if he uses the front camera on his phone, that counts? I don't know. Oh wow, that's like a a life hack. Mark has a flip phone right now. <laughs> like it would. It would the man's got a be... flip phone. Um, actually, the Razer was the first phone where you could take a front-facing selfie because you would turn the camera on, close the flip phone, go like this, and in that tiny little one by one square, you, there was a little U. Yeah. Thank you. That was the first camera phone my mom ever got. My that was the first was camera phone jealous. everyone had. I, I had a razor. I, lo I loved it. Did I you, liked it yeah, a lot. you got it either in silver or in like hot Pepto Bismol pink. It was silver. No, see, that wasn't this. The one she had wasn't those razors. They were like the weird ones that even said like Verizon across the front. It was just like a silver flip phone that had that little like one by one screen on it that you yeah, could take a lot picture of, with. Okay, see, I knew a lot of phones had the little screen on the front, but like I had like my first cell phone. It just gave you the time on that one by one screen. The razor was the yeah, first no, one this I you remember. Could, yeah, this one, it was just one of those stupid silver flip phones, and I had a little screen you could take a photo, because I remember she had it. You could set the photo, and the photo was a shitty, shitty photo of me, her, and my sister that she had taken when she first got the phone for, like, ever. Uh, um, old cell phones are hilarious. Well, cell phones <laughs> are hilarious. If you think about how quickly cell phones moved, it's kind of funny. Um, they like personality now, but that's a different argument. Hmm. I'm not going to get into that now. Um, Done to I else. like that <laughs> we have no idea what. I like that they're not talking about the rest of the MCU because here's the thing: I don't care. No, and like, I I don't need every Marvel thing to be a. I agree. A ref a, re a dump of references. I, I agree because I have also accepted that at this point, like Moon Knight is going to end up somewhere else in the Marvel universe at some point. That's just how they work now, and I don't need the hinting or the references to know that that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if you have the island where all the crime happens, why don't you just say that she's been there before type of thing? Because why? But like, why do it? Why add in just these chunks of exposition or these random things in the background of scenes just because someone's going to get excited because it links to one other thing? Yeah. I, I mean, I know Especially I said, right now, because I cannot listen to another person say that his alters are different people from the multiverse that he's talking to through mirrors. I can't no, do that it anymore. That Doctor funny. Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, I hate now and don't want it to exist. <laughs> no! Yeah, yeah, I wish Loki never happened now, because people on Twitter are just driving me fucking crazy. No! You did it! But I mean, like, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm part of the problem, because I just went, I wonder what it is that they were doing in Mandrapal, but it's like, I also might not never actually need that answer. I just feel like yeah. The the again, I don't. You need only a... care about it because they've done it before, and so you exactly. expect it. But it also and like it just doesn't need to be there, and that's I fault Marvel for that because it's like you did this, you brought See, this upon I'm, yourself. I'm more down for us to start going down the road where the references don't necessarily have to mean anything major for the story, but it's just the way a way to make the world feel more connected. But why? I, I agree with that, but I also think it's... I think a lot of it is just covering their asses. They're putting these lines in just in case kind of a thing. Like, if something goes wrong, we have this line that we can use to as a scapegoat for this thing. I don't know. And that's why I don't like when they just force in the references. <clears throat> like, Match Report, notwithstanding, because they did a pretty good job of just establishing that, like, that's a place where a lot of crime happens. So, like, I get that. There are cities in real life that, like, everybody knows, like, this is Ameri like U.S. centric, but everybody makes jokes about Detroit being dangerous as yeah. fuck all the fucking time. Like, so like I'm fine with that, but like I don't want more. It doesn't need to be a massive thing, especially because in this episode we have all the other the other gods that are there being like the point of our avatars at this point are just to like chill and hang out and see what happens. Why I don't fucking know, but like whatever. Um, so I'm fine with it being self-contained. Eh. They're in a, if we're going by mythology, they're in a field somewhere having a great fucking time. Like, I don't- Grand They're in an time. open field? Like, my dog from my childhood who we took up to a farm upstate? Yeah, legitimately, it's the- Precisely like, like that, like, actually. Good people in- nice. That exact in field. Mythology is like a field. I don't remember- It has a name, I just don't remember what it is. Field of Reeds? Ask Jordan. He dropped off his dog. Yes! <laughs> Sorry. Field of Reeds, I think, is the name. <laughs> Um, um, it was that a parody on uh, <laughs> Field of Dreams, the baseball. Oh, no. <laughs> they did. They did talk about the Overvoid, which is uh, a huge. Oh, what the Overvoid. What was that? Um, 
it's like a different dimension essentially where the egyptian gods are at hanging out or imprisoned or whatever it's in oh. um okay. the one of the big moon night runs and so which is uh the kind of the major source of inspiration that they've taken uh for this series and um makes me think we might go there i could see us going there i don't uh, be maybe, surprised maybe for like the final battle or something that would be cool um because the comics is off have also done a lot with the like the rivers that old ancient Egyptian mythology believes, and that ties into um, where all the gods hang out, and they, like, get in fights, and, like, one god is always running from another one up and down these two rivers, and that's how the sun and the moon move. Like, it's a whole fucking thing. Hmm. Um, yeah, they're just, like, they're in a field. Yeah, it's called the Field of Reeds is where you go after you die. Um, it's, like, the transition to the next plane. Um, yeah. Ancient Greek mythology has a similar field that you just go and hang out in. Um, or you go to an island in the Caribbean. So those are like your, or hell, those are your options. <laughs> um, no, but I, I like that it's, I don't know. I like that it's not tied to anything and that like nothing else really matters. They're doing their thing. Mark has no idea what's going on in his own day to day life. So like, I don't need to be worried about when does this take place with Far From Home and Loki and, like, all this stuff? I'm fine just chilling and, like, no, letting again, it be its own project. I'm very happy that the show as a whole is is a, a show that stands on its own. You don't really need other context to get into it. Because we, at the same time, we all know at some point he's going to show up in something bigger or, at the very least, in something with, like, um, the werewolf and um, Black Knight and Blade. Like, we know that there will at least be that mm -hmm. little group going on. Yeah. It, like we're on track to get them in the midnight suns but like yeah i i don't think we'll get it but um some of this you hear stuff... oscar isaac wants to get midnight suns but wants to add daredevil to the roster and i was like i don't know if you're ever gonna get that sweetie <laughs> i don't know if that's ever a wish you're gonna see fulfilled but uh oscar yeah isaac i mean wants to hang out with charlie cox <laughs> It, again, this is like, you know, it could be answered by timeline stuff or whatever. Not timeline, like multi multiverse timelines. Mm -hmm. It's like where we're at in this uh, universe of like, you know, Doctor Strange and, and Wong and, and the Sorcerers. Like, that's part of their job is to like monitor and track like um, supernatural and multidimensional threats. And what? Somebody tweeted yesterday was like Doctor Strange watching the sky turn as Kanju turns us back two thousand years, and it was somebody looking out their window and then just returning to their like cup of coffee or whatever. And I thought it was funny. <laughs> but yeah, that's really like, like that's that kind of that's kind of under their purview a little bit. So I wonder. I don't think we'll have Wong or Strange show up in the show, and, and obviously in uh, Multiverse of Madness, he's going through his own stuff there Shit. so um yeah i just wonder uh which, which obviously with the midnight suns connection like they they obviously have a strong uh comics canon connection already so uh yeah it would be cool to see them uh interact someday they curse a lot in this show yeah i think we had the mcu's first f-bomb last episode it just has he said shit like six different times in this episode alone mm-hmm and, like, I didn't notice it because I'm an adult and I watch content where they curse, but, like, it, like, hit me last night while I was watching it that, like, I viewed it as normal because I watch other content where they talk like that, but, like, for a Disney, never was on Netflix, this is just a Disney Plus show. I get now why, uh, why Simu Lee had to, had to log into whose parental controls to watch it in England. Like, I get it. They curse a lot. <laughs> Do you think you picked um, up on it because you started to realize Young Justice is going more adult? And so, like, now that's just your mindset of, like, oh, Guys, yeah. Young Justice Season 4 is great. Everybody watch it, please. I don't give a shit if you've never watched the show before in your life, but Season 4 is so good. It is way better than it has any business being. <laughs> it's so good. It, it's, like, Invincible now. There's a ton of blood, and they just murder people. Like, you literally watch a chick get cut in half. Another guy gets his skin ripped off, like... And you, you see it? Yeah, they went, we're on HBO Max now, motherfuckers. Here we fucking go. Look at all you guys all started watching this on, on my Cartoon desk. I did not mean to open that can. It's so good. It's <laughs> upsetting. Have you ever watched a show and you're like, this is going to be fine. And then it exceeds every expectation you ever had. And you're like, oh. 
Well, now I feel cheated that the first three seasons weren't this good. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about that later. Um... <laughs> Jordan tweeted a question about Young Justice at the writer of Young Justice as he was arguing with a Twitter troll who was shitting on the show for well, something Other stupid. people- And like, that's when Jordan chose to ask the question. Because he was doing his, like, AMA- not AMA. Like Why he, did you ask on the Q&A tweet, not the one Because other people reply to other questions. Other people reply to the quote oh, tweets, God. and I was like, if I go to a recent one, he's more likely to see it. He quote tweeted me once, so you know, that's cool. Yeah. He didn't um, know what the word mood meant. Can I bitch about Layla for a second? Go ahead. Go it's ahead. not that I dislike her. I think she's good. I think the people who are saying that she's like a Mary Sue or any of that kind of shit online are being assholes and just don't like that she's a woman. However, she picks very bad, and I, I get it. I'm a victim of this sometimes, too. But we are in a situation where we can't be having therapy time with Mark at every down moment. Sometimes we just need to be focused on the task at hand. And, like, I understand that these are conversations that need to happen and that you were married, but, like, later. And he says that to her. He's like, can, can we put that, our shit aside for a second? And then she's kind of like, Yeah, okay. but he's also a dickhead about it and gives her, like, a non-apology. That's the one scene where I'll give her it's okay to be having that conversation. <laughs> it's when they're at the, like... It's not jousting, but I didn't catch what they called it. But it was like, oh, see, it was the guy... Like a battle royale jousting match. Yeah, and they called it something, and they were all surprised, and I was like, I don't know what this is. Um, but, you know, here we are. I don't know what it um, is either. And that's when she started one of those conversations. I'm like, not the fucking time, dude! <laughs> see, I was talking more about the part on the boat. The part of the boat I was fine with. You guys are just chilling. You're just riding a boat to like somewhere. Yeah. What else are you going to talk about? Like, actually, I actually enjoy the 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 boat scene. I think it's the only the boat scene, scene is very this, nice. This is my own personal opinion. I don't think they have a lot of chemistry. They don't feel like they were ever together. But and I don't know what to like blame for that or where to put the the cause of that. But the the boat scene is the only exception where I felt a little bit of like connection between them every other scene i've had with them i i think layla's fine i like i like her as a character i just think their connect her connection with uh mark doesn't feel genuine to me yeah the, the boat scene i found was very very sweet because there's the moment where like the the argument kind of came up very naturally and he went let's just put all this shit aside right now and then when he looked over at the people on the boat partying which is just accurate and that that <laughs> old woman does that that noise it's something that my family does as well he goes oh that's that's a wedding thing and he looks at her he goes i've heard it before assuming that that her mom or her grandmother did that at their wedding i fucking hate mark in that scene for so many different reasons but the scene where, where he's holding her hands is very cute and a really really good shot um fuck mark though also i wrote he oh fuck you mark but i'm thinking arthur implied that mark knows something about the death of Layla's father that he has not told her. If I remember correctly, Mark knew who killed, in the comics her name's not Layla, but Mark knew who killed the archaeologist that is that character, that Layla character's father, and did not inform her <laughs> when he should have. Hmm. Um... But that may not be what they're going towards. And I didn't take it as that he killed her, just that he, like, probably knows something. Th that's worst case Because they all used probably... to work together in England. Yeah. Or in England. Egypt. In Egypt. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's anywhere from he knows a lot about the murder of her father, or he straight up did it. But it's something in that realm. I can see him being, like, tangentially involved in some way, but he didn't, like, directly do it and didn't mean for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it going to be like a Spider-Man thing where she didn't if... stop the guy 10 minutes earlier and that caused the dude to go and kill her husband, her dad? I fail to see the part where that's my problem. That yeah, kind of exactly. That type of thing. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say that I think it, it might be something more when they put... We don't know... They show it in the trailer, but you can't see who's carrying him when they put his body at the base of the Kansu statue that gives him his powers. I wouldn't be surprised if we find out that that was Layla's father and, like, Beauchamp and that... That process killed Layla's dad somehow, but... Yeah, like, take a life to give a life kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, and Kansu's a bad person, so I wouldn't be surprised. Like, he's not a good dude, so... <laughs> um, How convenient. You're here, I need him alive. Bye-bye, kind of thing. Yeah, pretty much. Um, 
at this point that we're we're halfway through i oh. hope that we get more of moon knight to explore his relationship with his fa his father but i hope that does not happen in the next three episodes yeah, just next, because like be we're not thing. there yet yeah mm -hmm. we're not there yet um and so i would rather s i want to see that at some point but like further down the line um just because yeah. i think it'd be too much to to bring in everything i do i do have a question so this the the other suited character like when Steven has the suit what what is his name I know he has a name Mr. Knight Mr. Knight Mr. Knight is it always that way in the comics like is that Steven's version or the other person's version of the suit There's an argument that it's the other that it's Jake's version of the suit is what some people because Jake is the like the billionaire alter and okay. so there are some people that say that because Mr. Knight is more of a detective than like a beat the shit out of you kind of guy that he's Jake's version of moon knight but you mm. never really get any confirmation um especially because a lot of the time in the comics like he knows about his alters he's he's he knows how to like kind of control when he he goes between them but he like knows and he can do a pretty good job of piecing together what happened while he was mm. whatever so i don't know it seems like in this they're tying it just directly to steven but i don't know if um yeah, I was just curious about that. that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the show needs to do to to grab me because I, I I don't know. It's just not doing it for me at this point. The action isn't doing it for me. The story isn't doing it for me. The effects. I I think I solved the poor CGI stuff. I just watched it on a on a worse TV, <laughs> and it all looked perfectly fine. <laughs> it looked great. <laughs> Let me tell you. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And that's a very real thing though with the 4K TVs. There are some things that you play and you're like, oh no, this should not be here. <laughs> this is watch not it, made for this. Watch it on a 1080 old. Uh, just giant TV, but just older. And I was like, wow, this looks great. <laughs> Watch the original Toy Story movie on a 4K screen and just experience that chaos because it is terrible to look at. Yeah, Not I even, that. I mean, I just saw a uh, screenshot once, like what the cat looked like in Toy Story 1 versus what it looked like in Toy Story 4. And I was like, ooh, it's like when you go back to a video game, you're like, this is how it looked in my hand. It's like, no, it fucking didn't. Yeah. Me playing the Hob the GameCube Hobbit game. And I went back and tried yeah. to play it a few weeks ago. And I'm like, this is awful to look at. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Literally, he it's doing that thing where like he fell off a roof, so he's like has something impaling him, but it's not actually affecting him at all. He's just like split in half because of, it's wild to look at. Um. Yeah. Right. Any final thoughts, guys? The Egyptian guy was hot. There are a lot of hot people in this show. There was a lot of Egyptian guys. <laughs> there are, there are the, Egypt. the, the, are the one who dies. The one who's sarcoph who has the sarcophagus that they need. Gotcha. That dude. I don't remember his name, but he's he's an attractive dude. Gotcha. Wait, wait, the guy that uh, Anton Mogart? Yeah, Mogart. Okay. Gaspard Uliel. <laughs> Kajun Tight. <Like> <laughs> Is that his full I name? I just remembered that, like, that at the beginning name. we said that that That's guy died. That's the actor's died. name. Oh, yeah, okay. now That's I feel far. bad for making that. I know what you meant. You were really talking hot. about the character in that moment. You forgot. It's fine. It yeah, when he's in that red bathrobe, it's a good look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're I not. I mean, if I've, if I've passed like on Hefner, and someone's like, if I've passed on and someone's like, yeah, in this movie, this dude was hot. Rest in peace. I'm cool with that. <laughs> like, what's I'm the okay opposite of rolling in your grave? Like you're doing that. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> All right, oh. chat. I want you, chat. I want you to answer this. Who has the better stash, Brett or Mogart? And the only answer is... Oh, Brett. Mogart. No, no, that's it's all for the chat. Okay. Brett, Can I well, bring up a, a separate <laughs> but interesting point about, about Brett's background? What? Not uh, not Ethan Hawke, the other one. Yes. Looks like a fisher from Missouri who just some stumbled through like a doorway I... and is now in the middle <laughs> of Egypt. One of my favorite parts Part of my the boat, show... <laughs> One of my favorite parts of the show is just the seeing the expansion of like who is a part of this cult. It's like yeah. we got fake cops, we got Missouri fishermen, like it, it's thing. bringing people of all the walks of life. I love it. About it's the so cult beautiful. Was you assumed that the people with him were all the people from the town in the last episode, and so it's like a mix of people. Yeah. But then he yelled something to them in Arabic. And everybody responded. And I know he said that they all speak three languages, but he never said they all speak the same three languages. 
English so like, and Arabic are the two requirements. The third, you get to pick. Yeah, Ooh. and some people just have You could argue, though, that with what they're doing, Arabic needs to be one of the requirements. Well, I assume, but then it made it sound like everybody in the cult that day was like, like that was the, uh, the Egyptian consulate, you know? Like, he left the other people mm -hmm. back, and now he's like... And then the three dudes in the beginning were all working for him. Also, we didn't talk about that, like... Was it twelve was it year old who just cut the scarf and fell off a cliff? Was it that, that scene kid or the was other older scene? than twelve? He was like seventeen, and everybody was being real fucking precious about him. I he know. was about to murder you on a rooftop. It's not a big deal that he died. When Kansu was like, "Oh, I thought he talked." I'm like, yeah, you're a cop <laughs> somebody, for saying that, but like, it's kind I, of who gives a fuck. Even somebody's... though, even though I saw that coming a mile away, like it was very predictable that that was going to happen. I still enjoyed the line delivery in that moment. I thought I thought it was good for Kansu. Kansu? I keep saying Kansu. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was good for Kanshu. Oh, that that would explain it. Yeah, <laughs> right, don't they say, cool. don't they say Kanshu though in the show? Who's to say? The, I can't really tell. Um, I'm not the one to ask about nuances like that because I somebody can't. <laughs> somebody on Reddit said that that dude got a better death scene, falling death scene than the Gamorians in the Boba Fett show, and I like <laughs> I lost it because like when that happened in, in Boba Fett, I was like. It's like, man, you're going to do these guys like that? Dude, like, if you had told me at the beginning of Boba so Fett that those two little green dudes were going to die, I would not have cared. And I kind of, it kind of hurt seeing it actually happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't give a shit about them. I didn't if, even notice they died. <laughs> if if by the end of the they, show... They were, like, they were walking back for like three minutes, slowly getting pushed back, and then they just fell. <laughs> it was like... They're scary looking pig things. Like, I'm okay with it. Yeah, but they <laughs> they, always, I don't they like looking at them. They were always in the Jabba uh, Palace um, a map in Battlefront, so I feel like I, I grew up with them. Like, they were always there, you know? Mm -hmm. As my as my closing thought, I will say that if by the end of the show, Mark and Steven are kind of, like, more working together, and they have this dope, like, just go, going through a amount of people, and Steven's, like, figuring stuff out as Mark is, like, fighting. Like, if they if they work together, and it's really cool, and it works on screen, I'll forgive it. I'll forgive it all. Yeah, I, I just want one good scene of them working together. I don't like know what these circumstances would be. But I would love to see a situation in which they have the synergy down. Like, he's fighting and he's switching in a second to Steven, who's doing his thing. And then as some people run, he's switching right back. But that seems like such a weird... I hope they don't do that. I don't, I don't know about the switching back. That is such back. a stereotype yeah. about DID. I really hope they don't do that. I wasn't really a switching back and forth. It was more so, like... Steven is mentally working through something as Mark is doing the physical stuff. Yeah. That's more like what I was doing. Or, uh, yeah. That Steven can, like, do things wherever he is. Yeah. Yeah, no. I definitely do, uh, he's you know. solving some equation of sorts. At the very Egyptian least, equation. I want them to uh, be more of a team and have that, you know, not be as um, much of obstacles to each other anymore. Hmm. Steven needs to grow up here. I fucking can't stand him. I don't understand why the entire internet is in love with him. Because like Steven. Oscar Isaac, but as a soft boy. I like Steven. Yeah. Cool, and that's fine. I he's should reading be the one that's poetry. into that. He's... Who cares? <laughs> like, I don't get I don't get He's a cultured man. I don't get it. I like I can't it's the voice it really what it is is I can't do the mm. voice. It drives me it's it moves. You don't makes, like him it, sounding like Oliver Twist? No, because he yeah. sounds like an 18-year-old musical theater kid at some state school trying to be Oliver Twist, is what it sounds like. And I can't stand it. I can't tell like, the difference it, between my wake and night. It, it fits his character. It fits, it fits Steven's character. I'm into it. Trailer, I, 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 I'm at the voice, not the line. Oh. <laughs> you sure. sounded like the Godfather, not <laughs> British. <laughs> It was very. I wasn't uh, trying to be good. New York Italian. No, I just like that your default accent is New York Italian. Mm -hmm. oh, that makes God. sense. That checks out. You watched Little Italy, and that's that's the only accent you can do now. <laughs> just Hayden Christensen's inconsistent accent. Yeah. Oh God. Which again, he has, but the his grandfather doesn't, which I love. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, yeah. We, we, we somehow turned this into a little Italy podcast. So that's how I know it's time to end things. But keep in touch. Keep in touch, guys. Oh, oh that's how you know. We talked about literally everything under the sun except for this TV show. All right? And this is where you cut it off. No, Little Italy's a movie. Uh, yeah, I'll that's say... not his point, Jordan. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> all right guys we will see you next week where hopefully we're or we not won't. dying <laughs> or we won't. who knows who's to say <laughs> they're not coming back after this guys, they're I'm not gonna be coming real. back we've all been struggling here at shared screens and you can see it in this episode <laughs> uh, oh god remember to like comment subscribe <laughs> The thumbnail for this Jordan should just be said, a blank thing. Jordan. It should just be a white screen. Jordan just said keep in touch. I don't know where I was going with it. <laughs> Jordan literally looked in the camera and went keep in touch. <laughs> All right, I'm going to actually end the recording. Bye.